two challenges here. One is to um, get the blue wash onto our piece of paper and fade it out so it's nice and soft. And the other one is to integrate the yellows, the oranges and the reds into that blue without it all just mixing and going horrible. So the way I'm going to do it, because <clears throat> I, and let me just show you these. I have some very, very quick practices just to give you some examples of um, different ways around you, do, you can do it. So this one was, um, <clears throat> I did still a bit wet actually, but this one basically I put the blue down um, and obviously I've got a bit of a watermark here purely because I went and put a bit more stronger blue on top, which was stupid, <clears throat> kicked myself for that. But essentially I put the blue down and then I dried the blue off and then I brought all the other colors on top. So that's one way we can do it. The second way, which worked a little bit of easier and is a bit more controllable, so we're going to do this one now, is I did all the yellows, the oranges and the reds and everything first, let all that fade out and then I did the blue on top. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first of all. So what you're going to want to, oh, what you're going to, want to do is wet um, the middle part of your piece of paper, so the middle part. Okay, because obviously this is where the yellows and all of that good stuff are going to go. So I'm wetting a band probably about so big. And we'll just let that settle in a second. Then I'm going to get some colour. So I'm going to use um, just some yellow, transparent yellow, or you can just use a normal yellow, whatever yellow you've got to hand in. I'm going to use this sort of golden yellow because it's quite a nice colour. And you want to put it on fairly strong. Okay, so I'm dipping straight into the tube just to get a good quantity of the paint. And I'm just going to work that into this middle section. It's a bit more colour. So I'm just going to work that into that water. Nice and strong. A bit more paint. Really work it in there. A bit more colour. So obviously if you're dipping into the, um, the paint tube, you want to make sure that that colour is well mixed into the water that's on the paper. Otherwise you'll end up with too many big blobs. Okay, that's probably enough. So it's nice and nice and strong. Now what I'm going to do is tip the board away from me so that the top of the board is towards the ground. Then taking my... Um, big mop brush or you can use um, a spray bottle if you've got it. I'm just using the brush because it's just a little bit more controllable. I'm just going to start to add some water to that top section just to get it to um, bleed up. I'm not worried about the bottom at the moment, I'm just only worried about the top. And you'll see why in a second. So we just bleed that up. <clears throat> until it's reasonably soft or as far as you want it to go. And then I'm going to actually then start to tip it back towards me. And then again, repeat the same exercise of washing out this bottom section. Might even add a little bit of spray into that just to get it moving a bit more. <clears throat> So we'll just let that run for a moment or two before we start to add the other colors. Okay, so I'll let that percolate. Next thing then is I'm gonna go and dip into some orange. Or if you don't have orange, you can just use, um, just mix red and, red and yellow together, that'll be fine. Um, mixing up a reasonably strong orangey mix. <clears throat> and again, I'm just going to work that into this existing colour. Then I'm going to dip into some red. Just into some red. So again, just straight from the tube. You can put it onto your palette first if you really want to. And just kind of 
mix the color up a little bit so it's a bit softer and then again i'm just going to work leaving obviously a bit of a gap because you want those colors to <clears throat> to um have room to move so a nice strong bit of red there we go and then last color is the um I'm just going to tip that. I've got a little bit too much water in that middle part, so I'm just going to tip that a second. Um, so the last colour is the purple. So I'm just cleaning my brush off. And then I'm going to dip into some purple. And then purple will be my bottom colour. And I'm going to do that going obviously into the dry paper. Just leave that dry. Okay, so that's fine. So I'm just gonna now give it a little spray just to get some of these edges moving so we don't have a hard, hard edge between any of the colors. There we go, and you can tip it and get some interesting reactions. So let's just clean up the edge. Let's tip it back this way. So what I'm looking to do is to try and separate or try and stop the, the banding becoming so obvious because we don't really want a line there if we can help it. So let's just leave that to move a second. So by tipping it, you're actually spreading, you're spreading the colors around and allowing them to move into one another a bit easier. Um, let's just add a bit more on that side. Okay, so that's probably enough of that. I'm just going to lay it a little bit flatter so it doesn't move so quickly. Clean up the edges. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a few moments just to do that part before I start on the blues because this needs time to time to dry or to settle down i should say i might actually just tip it that way a second just to get that purple moving a bit more <clears throat> oops make sure you can see that so get those colors to mix a little bit more Okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave that flat. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna dry that off while you're doing that. <laughs> Stage one is to re-wet um, this middle area. I'm not gonna come down too low. I'm just gonna re-wet. So I want a little bit of a a light band. So I'm going to be wetting sort of through this area here with clean water. I'm just going to use my spray bottle um, just to wet a band through that sort of middle area. Now I'm going to start off leaving the board so that the ready stuff is at the top. And I'm going to put my blue in at the top of the board here. Nice and strong, and obviously let it creep into that water. Um, water. Stuart, did you wet that whole area? No, 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 no. Just the um, just this band through here, as oh, I said. Oh, okay. Okay, I wasn't looking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So just just the band I've wet, and okay. now obviously I've got the board tilted towards me, working up into that water. Don't want to go too high to start off with. Going to mop that up because the magic's going to happen obviously when we spin it round. So now I'm going to turn it and let that start to creep down. So we'll give that a moment or two without doing anything to it. I'm not going to spray it or um, play with it too much. I'm just going to tilt it and 
get that blue, coax the blue down into those yellowy colors. Just let it mix slowly. And unfortunately, this bit's a little bit like watching paint dry, but you know, it's all part of it. So let's keep that tipping. Now you see obviously where the blue hits the yellow, where we get patches of blue and yellow together, we're getting a, a, a greeny tinge to the color. And obviously it's controlling that is the, um, is kind of the key. So I don't want a line, so I'm just going to give that a little spray through there just to soften that off. Just to give it a little bit more room. It was reaching the edge of the water patch that I put on. <clears throat> let's fill that up. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Let's fill that up and let's go back that way. So just keep tipping it. Um, to get the paint to move to where you want it to move to. And obviously if it gets too dark or there's too much, oops, I've just had a run in my top of the sky, that was great. Um, if it gets too dark, then you can just tip it obviously back the other way and then it should lighten out. So we'll tilt the board now. Oops, let's do it on the, on there. So I'm tilting the board now away from me so that the water, the paint's now running in that direction. And obviously then this area then will become lighter again. So let's just let that creep back up. And obviously the steeper you tip it, the, um, the further the paint's gonna travel. Let's go back that way. And then once you've done all of this, you can then think about um, drying it off or just laying it flat and let it dry naturally, whichever you prefer. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna lay that down flat now. And I'm just going to quickly just spray through this middle section because it seems to have a bit of a bit of a line there for some reason. I'm going to tip that <clears throat> away. Just mop it up. Might be all right once it's dried. <clears throat> And then I'm going to hair dry this off once the excess water's run away. So just keep mopping the edge up. <clears throat> just have a look, see how shiny it is. Okay, I'm gonna lay that flat now and then just give that a quick dry. in our sky. We'll probably wipe out for the, um, the kind of the sun area. And then obviously we need to um, let all of that dry. Then on top of that, we can then start to paint in the, um, the distant uh, shoreline. We'll dry that off, then we'll paint in the, the boats. We'll dry that off and then we'll start to paint in the, um, uh, the, the the kind of the reeds and the, the stuff in the foreground. We may need to darken up the sky a little bit. So we'll do that. We'll just see how it goes. Yeah, and that'll be it. And then obviously we might have to add a few little white spots at the end <coughs> for the um, reflection of the, I think it's the moon or the sun in the, um, in the water. Okay, so everybody's ready then. Let's make a start. Um, if you want to, if, if you have got your mics unmuted, if you don't mind just muting them for this next little phase. And then um, we'll probably stop about half 11, hopefully if we get enough done by then, and then, or half 11, quarter to 12, maybe, depending on how we get on. Um, and uh, we'll do a little lap. Okay, any questions? 
No. Right, let's get started. Then. Okay. First thing then, big brush. And we're going to wet, um, actually we're going to wet pretty much most of the, um, most of our paper. I'm going to start off by wetting a band through the middle. So I'm leaving the top, that side and that side dry. Okay. So we're kind of like we just did with the, the sunset or the sunset colors. I'm just wetting through this sort of middle section. And then we're going to make up a color. So color wise, it's sort of pinky purpley. Um, the under color in this, in the reference. Let's aim for something like that. Using some um, crimson, if you've got it, or if you don't have crimson, you could use just a bit of red, normal red, cadmium red. Crimson tends to be a little bit less aggressive. So I'm going to use a bit of crimson, which will give me this sort of pinky um, kind of colour and a tiny bit of cerulean in that, just to blue it or purple it very, very slightly. Cerulean being not too, um, too strong a colour, it will just, it'll just make it slightly purpley, not too purpley, just a soft pastely, pastely purple is really what I'm after. Um, let's mix that together really well. Don't get too many lumps of blue. It might be okay, let's try that. So running it through the, um, the center section again. So just quite liberally putting that on. <clears throat> so this is just the cerulean blue and the, and the um, crimson. And I should get a bit of splitting, which it seems to be doing quite nicely for me. So if you do get that, then that's great. A bit more of that. So it's through this middle band. A bit more blue, a bit more red. Just slightly strengthening it up. Now I'm gonna tip the board away from me. So that the paint starts to run up the paper, like just. Yeah, Stuart, yeah. Are, you, are you painting just on the water or on some of the dry? Uh, no, this is all in the water at the moment. Okay. So all where I just wet it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So all of this. Remember this middle band. I put water in. Okay, and that's where I'm painting into. So let's put plenty of that on there. A little bit more just through here. Perhaps a bit more blue actually. A bit more cerulean. Quite a nice dusky, dusky colour. A bit more of that in there. Perhaps a bit over that side. Okay, that's enough of that. Now what I'm going to do is take some, take my mop brush with some water in it, and I'm just going to now wash out. We'll get that paint to creep up even further at the top here. So as you can see, it'll get really, 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 really soft as it starts to disappear. Let's wash a bit more of that out. Might even use a bit of spray. Just to get that paint to move up nicely. And then I'm going to mop up, oops, try not to drop the painting. I'm going to mop up this edge. Keep it soft. Okay, and when you've got it roughly how you want it, I'm going to tip it back towards me now. Otherwise, if we leave it um, pointing away, we're going to get a hard line here. So I don't want that. So now I'm going to spray out the bottom section. So we get it running down at the bottom. So you should end up, when you've done this, with a, 
a sort of a, a darker middle band getting softer at the top and softer at the bottom. That's kind of what we're after. Okay, so we just wash that all out, mop it up. So I'm gonna tip it now slightly to the left, just to fill up this area down here. As I go, I'm just mopping up the excess water and paint is kind of coming off the board, just so that when I tip it back the other way, I don't get any massive runs. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna spin it 180 degrees, tip it the other way, just to even it out on this side. So you see where the cerulean blue and the red have kind of separated from one another, which is quite nice. <clears throat> Give it a bit more angle. <clears throat> Just to get a bit more color down in this left-hand corner. So you have to take your time with this first part. If you rush it, then um, you won't get such a good result. So just give yourself enough time to get the paint to move where you want it to. But the worst thing you can do at this point is go in there with a brush. You start filling with that with a brush and you're just gonna wreck it. So number one rule, put your brush down and just let the paint do what it needs to do. If you wanna get it moving a bit further, give it a little spray. Um, <clears throat> or use a big mop brush. Even if I went in there now with a mop brush, now I'm going to get a line. So it's really in spray territory now with this. With this, you can't really put a brush in there. Otherwise, you're going to get you're going to get lines coming along. And then you'll just need a spray bottle, obviously, to wash those away if you do get one. Okay, and then let's lay that back down. <clears throat> just going to mop that up a little bit. It's all as soft as we can keep it, nice and pastely, like so. Now, the last thing we need to just pay attention on before we can um, move on and dry this is just wipe out for our sun. So I'm taking some, um, just some tissue. Now I'm gonna bring my sun down a little bit because um, uh, I want it about here. I don't want it halfway up the paper. So doing it in the darkest spot you want to bring your sun. So let's have it or moon, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to wipe mine out in here. Just taking the tissue and just wiping out nice and soft. And then you just need to just very gently run the tissue around the edge of that bit you've just wiped out just to soften it off. So it's not a hard shape. Let's just block that a bit more, just to keep it a bit cleaner. Okay, so what you might find is this is drying, the paint might creep back into there, so you might have to blot it again um, if it does start to disappear on you. But I'm now going to dry mine off with a hairdryer. Brush, brush, brush. Let's use, yeah, let's use a big brush. Make sure it's clean. Clean brush. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a trick. So what I'm gonna do now is take my piece of watercolor paper. Um, let's turn that over. So a piece of watercolor paper that's got a straight edge to it. It could be a piece of card, it could be um, 
you could you can use tape but I, I decided not to use tape because i want to be able to take it off quickly um, to be able to start to paint the buildings so what you need to decide is how far down from your sun the edge of the water is going to come now the things to bear in mind are that you want to give yourself enough room obviously to get your buildings in but you want a little bit of that graduated sky that's starting to go slightly lighter behind your buildings okay you don't want to bring your buildings up into this dark area otherwise they'll just disappear all right so i'm going to bring my water line somewhere about probably somewhere about there um leaving me enough room to bring sort of a jaggedy building line that will be just below this sort of bluey area okay so the way that i'm going to do it is i'm going to just run some water along this um this edge so i'm taking my brush running the water along that edge okay just run it along and then i'm going to take the board away so now what i've got is a nice straight line of wet okay and then i'm going to take a smaller brush with my um sort of purpley bluey colors that i've used in the sky maybe slightly bluer but still within that same purpley blue sort of spectrum and then we can start our buildings a little bit lighter so then i can start by painting like we did the um exactly the same way as we did the uh the one last week okay no different let's get my rigger ah. Okay, so what you've got to keep an eye on is just to make sure that this wet band stays wet. So if it starts to dry out, then obviously then you can just add a bit more moisture to it. Um, but all I'm going to do is just go along that wet band with a, a rigger and just periodically just make some straight top edges, a few gaps. Just keep them fairly straight. Maybe a few spaces few uprights, um, perhaps a little bit higher on this side. There we go, that's one side done. Then we can come back this way, perhaps a little bit lower. And then maybe it comes a bit higher. <clears throat> a bit more blue, a bit more red, Ooh, touch of purple in there. Coming across, all the way across. And obviously you don't want to dilly-dally with this too much because it will be drying. A little bit more blue. And you want to allow yourself time to be able to tip this a bit, to soften it all out. Okay, so that's that. I'm then going to tip it just to get the paint to move. Exactly the same way as we just did with the sky and everything else. <clears throat> and obviously you don't really want to be coming underneath that line because that's going to be where our water is going to come or water will be coming. So the next thing to go on top of that will be the boats. So I'm actually going to tip this away from me so that I get a kind of a darker, darker top edge to that wash and just let that, let that dry naturally whilst you catch up. <clears throat> Does anyone need me to repeat what I just did there? Everybody okay? <clears throat> Uh, yes, please, Philip um, Stewart. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what we did is you take your your piece of card, okay, or board, watercolor paper, whatever you want to call it. You're going to take a brush with just water in it, nothing else, just water, and you're going to run it along. Obviously, that piece of card wetting your watercolor paper 
along an edge. You then take the card away and you should then end up with a nice straight line where the, um, the card was. Once you've done that, you then take your rigger or your, um, your brush with a slight point on it. And then you start to just push up these sort of square uprighty type shapes at the top edge of that wet area. So not in the wet area, above the wet area, but it touches where you just wet so that you've got the, the paint running kind of towards you. Once we did all the buildings, kind of tipped it, just even it out. And then I'm now leaving it to dry by tilting it away from me. And by doing that, I should end up with a slightly darker top and a lighter bottom. Okay, so you should end up with this area down here slightly lighter than the area that's on top because obviously we're going to bring our boats on next and we want those, like we did with the sky, to kind of stand out a little bit. Does that make sense? Super. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. You? Yeah. It's me. Um, how much depth did you leave at the bottom? I can't quite tell. Is it three, four inches? What here? Yeah. Yeah, it's about, I don't know, about, I don't know, sort of maybe one and a half thumb lengths. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how long that is, but yeah, it's about it's about that big. Right, it's about three and a half inches. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it all depends on where your sky came down to, really. It's the bit that is most important is where this dark bit starts to graduate into the lighter part. Yeah. Because that's where you then want to bring your buildings. If your yeah. darker part and lighter part is higher up, yeah. obviously you need to move it higher up. Yeah, okay, got it. Thank you. <clears throat> do you, when we finish painting the buildings in, yeah. do we do anything to that bottom edge to soften it off? Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, because we're going to put the boats over the top of it next. Okay. If you look at the image, there's a, there's a number yeah, of yeah, little mine boats. Mine looks a bit funny, but it's uh, more me than you. <laughs> funny? What funny ha ha or funny not good? <laughs> not good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Was it not straight then? I don't think I got the first one straight, so I tried to correct it and it's not <laughs> bit. Mm. Oh, you've been you've been playing with it, have you? Play, don't play. Mm, no, I didn't. <laughs> I don't, I'm not very good at doing straight edges. Would you please? All oh, right. Well, that's <laughs> why we use the card. Board, uh, that's no, why I have been it. playing with the other bit. I've messed it. It's all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to give this a quick dry, just so we can move on. Okay, so it's now nice and dry. 
So it should hopefully end up with something similar to that with any luck. So the next thing then is to think about these little boaty shapes. Now, what we're trying to say here, and this is a little bit about perspective, but I don't want to obviously um, bore you to death with perspective, but effectively we're trying to say that these boats are sitting in the water, but they're closer to the viewer, us, the painter, than these buildings. Now, because um, <clears throat> it gets a little bit technical, but effectively what we're trying to say is that the boats need to come just below this line. Okay, not on the line. They need to come just not below the line. the line. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. So don't start painting these boats right on that line. They need to come maybe about a millimeter or so, not too far. Now, if you start putting them down here, then they're gonna be looking very odd. All right, so you just need to make sure that they're very close, probably about a thumbnail width below that line, all right? So, um, color-wise, uh, I'm going to use, now what you could do if you really wanted to, you can cheat again and you can kind of put a piece of card like that so you don't get the bottoms um, going too low. So let's try a few like that and I'll show you how that goes. <laughs> So taking some of my um, original bluey gray kind of wash and I'm going to make it a bit darker. So let's put a bit more, um, let's go slightly paint gray. Just to make it a bit darker. Okay, so um, using the rigger. Now, if you don't have a rigger, then um, you want to make sure that the brush you are using has got a nice point to it because we're going to be doing some of that where we get some verticals. You could use a cocktail stick if you have one, probably easier. Um, but I'm just gonna be using my rigger and kind of pressing the side of the rigger like that to give me my verticals. Okay, so it's the vertical that's the most important thing. So let's start off, I need to lift this off because it's too much of an angle. Can you still see that okay, hopefully, yeah. Okay, so keeping it nice and flat, um, we're going to come with one about here. So just starting to bring some of these vertical shapes. And they don't have to go all the way down to the card. They can disappear in the mist. Um, but we're also going to be bringing some um, sort of dark bottoms to these shapes. So don't worry about that. Let's just bring that one a bit lower. And then for the boats themselves, all I'm going to do is just oh. almost... Oh, who was that? Me, sorry, too wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just put these little sort of box shapes. Not all of them the same size, obviously, and have some of them spaced out. They're just like little dits and dots with a slight angle to the side. <clears throat> so let's have one there and let's join that one up. Another one over here, join that one up. A couple more over here. Maybe that one's on its side, you know, you can see it from the side. I can't see any boats. Nor can what, I. <laughs> in the reference. No, it's, it's so small, I can't see them. <laughs> oh, that's what I thought. I had to expand the picture. Oh, boats! <laughs> okay. They were chimneys. I put chimneys. Well, you you can make it whatever you like. They don't have to be boats. If you want to make them chimneys, then by all means, fill your boots. I think I've got Foy Refinery on mine. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. <laughs> Mary and so have I. Good. That's all right. <laughs> I'm just going to put some sideward on boats. So I'm just painting these a bit longer and then I'll put some masks on top of them. Mm -hmm. Just have some masks, some thinner masks. So maybe these ones are a bit further away. And perhaps Actually, that one's gonna get dark, but block him off. He's a little bit heavy. So yeah, if they are a bit dark, then just block them off. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to dry that off. And then what I'm going to do, just to make it a bit more interesting, so we get a bit more practice with that, I'm going to put another rowboat before, oh. we, get into the, <laughs> really? before we get into the land, all right? And it's really just to reiterate the idea of, of controlling the paint a little bit more. Um, <laughs> think about the darkness of the colour that you're putting down. So now these boats are going to be slightly closer to us, so they need to go a bit darker still. So I'm going to put a bit more Payne's Grey into the wash. So it's a little bit darker. And then we'll do the same little trick. Now I'm going to overlap some of these boats. But by overlapping them, I don't again want them to come too low. So um, just a tiny, tiny bit lower than the boats that you've just put on. So I'm going to have a boat cutting across this one. And he's going to be a bit bigger. So a few boats. So you want the bottoms of these boats just to be a tiny bit lower, not too much lower, as I said, than the ones that you've just put on. Because we're trying to say that these ones are closer. So let's have a side grid on one here. Are you using the same brush, Stuart? Yeah, same brush, same rigger, yeah. Um, Come a bit bigger on that one. Come a bit higher on that one. Is that rigor a one or a two? Um, it's a two. Yeah, all right. Mine's ever so fat. You could say two, but <laughs> this is um, a a sable one though. This one. So let's just have a few of these masts. Now the masts need to go higher because obviously the boats are closer than the mast you put on originally. Okay, and then we get another row, another row of boats. Ooh, I've just blobbed on some colour, that's a bit of a nuisance. Oh well, never mind, that's going to be in the grass now. Spray that out. Okay, and then again, all you need to do is just dry those off and then we can move on so let's just dry that quickly okay. So next thing then is the grasses or the wetlands, whatever you want to call it, or the marsh. So we need to put some, um, some water down in a way to kind of define, like we did with the buildings, like we did with the boats. So let's do the same little trick with a piece of card. So there's cards coming in handy today. Try and get a dry bit this time. It's not going to put watercolour all over my painting. Now, again, the distance between that, the boats, and this next piece of um, colour we put on is quite important. So if I move this piece of card down, okay, to about there, and I start to put my grasses in, it makes the distance between here and there a lot greater, meaning that those are really massive now. <laughs> if I bring this up, Okay, it's, all, it's almost like we're looking over, just over the top of the grasses and that's a lot closer to us. Okay, because this distance we're not seeing so far. All right, so that's kind of the idea we're trying to get across here. Um, doesn't always work that way. Could you repeat that? Way, that? I didn't understand. It's all to do with the way that you're viewing. So if I make this down here and I make the gap of the water a lot longer, yeah, you can appreciate that the distance between this piece of grass and those boats is further away. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So by bringing that up, it makes those boats closer to us because the grass, the, there's not so much water between the, um, the boats and the grasses. Okay, so it makes this appear a bit closer to the viewer. Okay. All right. It's just, it, yeah. it's not always that case, but it, just for this exercise, we're going to do it that way. Okay. 
So I'm going to take some um, some water, and the water is just to wet the bottom edge of where this grass is going to come, and I want it to come to about not quite halfway, maybe just over halfway, I think. So I'm going to re-wet just clean water, um, a line, okay, like so. Then taking my um, rigger, I'm going to make up a sort of a greeny colour now. So I'm going to take some Payne's grey with some yellow in it. So it's going to be a dull green, I don't want it a really bright green. So it's Payne's grey and yellow. And then I'm going to start to drop that in along this edge where I've just wet. And obviously you can undulate it a little bit. You know, if you want there to be some, some like grass is sticking up, you just break through into the dry paper to sort of uh, indicate that there's some, some grasses or whatever sticking up above that, that line. Just break that edge up a little bit. And then I'm gonna just let that taper out on that left-hand side. Make up a bit more gray and yellow. And then I'm gonna to start to fill in the bottom area of this shape. And that's all it is, it's just a shape, effectively. Have you wet that, Stuart? No, this is now into dry paper. So we get a little bit of dry brush technique as well. So I'm using the side of the brush just to get those breaks in the um, in the in the um, you know the wash, and then we'll come across the front. A bit stronger again with the colour. Oh, that's a bit too strong. A bit more yellow in that. So just working this in. And I'm going to just make it nice and messy, <laughs> for want of a better word, um, as we come into the middle, because we want it nice and broken. Maybe just a few taps. The odd post here and there. And then I'm going to spray out this bottom section. So let's do that now. Oh, get the card. So I'm going to block off the top and just let that bleed downwards like so. <clears throat> and that's probably enough on that piece of land. Um, I haven't actually left any room to get my reflection in so let's just blot a bit of that off because I've kind of gone over where the reflection is going to come down. The reflection is going to come in there. So I'm just lifting out a little bit of paint just so I can add that back in. Okay, let's let that run down. <clears throat> Maybe we should have some very, very light gray green bits of grass on this left hand side coming in. So this is just again on dry paper. Oh, I don't want too much of this. I'm just going to Mm. Add a couple of little spots and then I'm just going to give those a little spritz. Just to get that to run down. Okay, now I need to let that dry or dry that off. Let's tip that a bit more. <clears throat> okay.
And then I just need to add a few little bits of highlights now. So I'm going to use, if I can find it, uh, we'll use a bit of white. It's gone. My There's a white. White. <sighs> so we'll have a bit of white, and then we'll have a bit of. Um, we got the yellow out, haven't we? Uh, just. Maybe a little bit of yellow, tiny bit of yellow. Just a bit of the transparent yellow and a bit of white. Oops, it's very dry. So I'm now going to dip my brush into both of these at the same time. So I'm going to dip it into the yellow and dip it into the white at the same time. And then using that, coming down from my light area, just going to add a few little oh. light marks. Clean that brush off, let's go a bit whiter. So just for the main reflection, I'm just going vertical. Obviously below the the um, the light source, so is our light source and we're coming below it. Um, just had a few little spots here and there. Perhaps a few little twinkles in the in the water. Maybe those are a bit big. And then a bit behind, mm, just a tiny bit, perhaps reflecting across there. And I might even venture. Don't know if this will work, but we can try it. Just brightening up the the top edge of my, and just block that in. Just using my finger, just to brighten that a bit more. Okay. Sorry, Stuart, when I'm just running behind a bit, the white, what was the other colour? You had two together, you yeah. showed us. The yellow. The yellow, okay. Yep. A light yellow or a dark yellow? Just a light yellow will be fine. Just softening these off with my finger a little bit. Let's restate that light part in the middle. Have you painted the water at all? Um, well, the water had um, the original wash that we put on right at the very beginning, oh. Oh. coming through it. Okay. Um, because I wanted it to reflect more of the the, the very very light sky colour. But if you want to put more blue in it, that you can do. Um, it's just that my one, I wanted to keep it quite light. Okay. And that's a do. Mm -hmm.